Hey everyone, good morning. Happy Daily Drop-In, where we are live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. Because it is the wonderful Monday morning, you know that I'm joined with the incredible Jeff Gargas. We have good news for you. We're going to be brainstorming a brand new theme this week. And we want to make sure that we provide you with a little bit of a preview of what we're heading into this week, because it is chock full of incredible discussion and upcoming guests that we're really excited to share with you. Please go fill up your coffee, spit your toothpaste out as you're getting ready for the day. Jeff and I are so excited to be here with you, and we'll be right back to kick off your morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. We're thrilled to be here with you, Jeff. It's good to see you. Cheers, buddy. It's good to see Cheers. you. Cheers. It's good to see you. I, I went with the I went with the solid color today because you always got rocking just different solid colors. So I do. I have like this type of like uh, cup in every color. That's what I keep using. That seems small, and I understand. I know you and Brad covered coffee last, so I don't want to get us into coffee thing. But I'm just curious, like, what size cup is that? Because it looks small. It is small. It's so I have an it's just like an eight ounce. No, I have an espresso machine. So this okay. is a double espresso. Oh. So it's small. I will say, though, as an update for all of you following the Ray Hubert coffee saga, I didn't end up ordering coffee in this morning. Major regrets. I think I'm going to need to order some coffee. Mm. But Jeff, you use a Keurig, don't you? I've been to your house a few times. Mm -hmm. Keurig in your house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a Keurig and then I, I've got a grinder and stuff, too, because I have the reusable uh, filter so you can use like your own by I, I mean we use cura cups and stuff but yeah so we've got the little cura tree that's got all the stuff on it and... yeah, that's so cool friends if you are watching daily drop in bright and early this morning really quick challenge for you as you're getting your coffee snap the type of uh machine you're using tell us what you think i do love my coffee machine i'm just telling you guys i ordered a different coffee brand and it does really affect your morning <laughs> It, it, it does. Now, does your machine do just straight normal, like just drip coffee too, or is it only the espresso? No, it's only the espresso. Mm, so, okay. yeah, which I really loved up until I may have not made a good decision in buying a different brand. So that was my own decision. Good morning to our friends that are not only here this morning, but also commenting live with us. We have Katie, Andrea, Lawrence here. So fun to have everybody jumping in, sharing their good morning messages. I uh, get to see each and every one of you. I actually um, was going to ask you how your weekend was, Jeff. But before we get into that, I want to brag on the fact that I got to spend some of my weekend with Katie Miglin here in the comments. Yeah, I mean, so my my immediate answer is probably not as good as yours, apparently. Well, we weren't actually together. We weren't physically together. We were on a <laughs> Zoom call because we were recording a new course coming to the Academy. Mm-hmm. How long, so all right so so paint the picture of how long this Zoom call was and then the percentage that was actually recording content goofing around and then also like pure shenanigans. Okay, I swear, Katie and I were very professional working through our course content. As you guys know, teachbetter.com has an academy which is an online learning platform for teachers to explore different topics. There's free and full courses. You can dive into workshops. I mean, literally there's so much there. We produce a new course every 30 to 40 days. Thanks to the incredible Andrea, who's also in the comments. Andrea on the Teach Better team runs our academy, holds us accountable and makes sure that the content is really, really great. So shout out to Andrea. Um, this course doesn't come out until October. So I'm, I'm not allowed to do any spoiler alerts. I'm not <laughs> getting in trouble with all the people watching, especially. I don't want to get in trouble, but I will say Recording a course takes a lot of time. We had done a ton of prep work beforehand. This was like truly just the recording time. And it took, I don't know, four hours, we or three hours. Okay. Between some shenanigans. I mean, there was some discussion. Obviously, we goofed off a little bit, but it takes time, guys. Yeah. I mean, there was some prep that we needed to go through. I, I want to note that uh Katie says it was weird to be serious for that long. But four hours, that's a, that's not a short amount of time to jump on a Zoom call on a Sunday. Well, 
Well, and the so that's real, that's impressive. Yes, and the real thing is, is like you're recording each video separately. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of like starting what are, and then stopping and then, okay, what we're talking about what the next video is going to be about, make sure we have our major goals and takeaways. Then you start recording again. And mm -hmm. there was only a few times where we were halfway through a conversation and then all messed up and we decided to re-record the whole section. I mean, this is pretty good, but this will be the debut of the one and only Katie Miglin creating yeah. the Academy. So I do have to tell like spoiler right here. So Andrea, plug your ears. She did better than I did. I was a hot mess <laughs> recording and Katie had like all this value she was providing. So at least, you know, half of it's good. I don't know. That's good to know. Good to know. Good to, to know what to expect. It was a good time. What did you do this weekend? Um, I, we, well, I went away Saturday, went away for the night with my wife to celebrate our 14th anniversary. Last Wednesday was our 14th wedding anniversary. So she has put we, up with for 14 years. I know it's incredible. I don't know what's going on still. Uh, so someone, someone said that 14 years, is a long time. I said, yeah, for her, for me, it's been like, whatever. Um, yeah. So we actually went to the hotel that we, um, did our rehearsal dinner at back way back when we did that for our 10th too. It's a really nice hotel here. It's close. So it's like an easy getaway for the night. Um, and we just, we, we got there and basically just watched TV together all night long. And we had, we ate a lot of food. We had a lot of food delivered to our room, which was great. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. We just kind of like did nothing for it, which is like really awesome to do at this point. So absolutely. Good. Well, you guys have two kids. You've been married for 14 years. I how long did you date before you got married? Not super long. We dated for know. less than not. We weren't even dating for a year. Yeah, um, you we dated for like. So, now we were we were really good friends for a couple of years prior to that, but then we only dated for like, gosh, maybe it was six months, maybe. Um, before I yeah popped the question, and then we then we didn't even wait a year. We waited about eleven months to get married then too. So we were going to wait a couple a year or so, about a year and a half, and then. We decided no. So it moved quick. After after it moved slow, it moved really quick. So okay. it was interesting. So well, I mean, I, I assume knowing your wife, Amy, a wonderful, wonderful woman, one of my favorite actually people affiliated with the Teach Better team. She's the sweetest <laughs> and saved me multiple times when I was lost in Ohio. Um, <laughs> but she's somebody that like I feel very confident you tricked her into marrying you because she is you married up, dude. She is. Yeah. So oddly enough, she's the one who pursued me. Yeah, but she was foolish. I mean, she I, had a, a low point. <laughs> Jeez, wow. I'm feeling, feeling great this morning. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you speak the truth. So. No, I think it's great. And I'm so glad that you guys truly took time away to relax. I mean, that's that's awesome. That's it, so yeah, it was fun. And, and actually, Saturday morning was a lot of fun, too. My, my nephew plays. Uh, he's 10, and he's playing at a pretty high level of soccer. So they happen to be playing in the area. So me and the kids were able to go watch them. I saw some old friends whose kids are on the team and stuff like that too. So it was just a good weekend all together. Now, that's not to say my weekend didn't have a little bit of jealousy in it. Jealousy? Because you got to hang out with your mom. I and did. she's the coolest. I spent some time with my mom and my and my dad. Yeah, oh, you was there too. I didn't even realize that. Okay. Yeah, on Saturday, so that was better. them too. So you know, trying to be enough social that you're seeing, you know, people, but not necessarily always in person, right? Mm -hmm. Katie, virtual. My parents oh. were in person. They live about 45 minutes away from me, so yeah. nice to be able to see them and you know, good stuff. Well, and and just I, I don't know if I clarify, but like Amy and I, we did our getaway. Like we did that virtually. No, you did. We got a two room suite. I was in one. She was in the other. We Skype. We zoomed the whole time. We did some FaceTime, but it was just, it was really great. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> I do have to say, as I'm thinking through, like, you just had an anniversary, which is so fun. I, I wish that that was on our holiday list. I think we need to add some Teach Better Team birthdays and anniversaries mm -hmm. to our holiday list because I know um, Megan on the yeah. Teach Better Team, who's Yesterday. Been really dropping her birthday was Sunday. Um, there's so many different like little moments here to celebrate. And my mindset truly is like, why not celebrate everybody's celebrations? Cause then you get more to celebrate. So I love it. Shout out to Megan. Happy birthday, Megan. Birthday, I hope, Megan. I kind of hope she's not awake yet, but then again, she is teaching this morning. So she must be up. Yeah, she's, she's probably up and moving. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but Megan also like typically works out in the morning. So she's actually yep. been up for like three hours and we're the ones that are behind. Uh, ran this morning. 
You ran this morning. Wait, tell us about that. I didn't realize well, it's today was a, today was a big one. I haven't I haven't worked out for three weeks. I looked. I've been struggling mentally to like get there and just every day it's like, oh well, I didn't do it, so I guess I'll just feel bad about myself and then not do it tomorrow too. And yesterday, after every how I we ate on Saturday night, I told Amy, I'm like, look, we're gonna get up in the morning. I'm gonna be irresponsible because it was a breakfast buffet. So we did that. I said, and then. I said, then I got to I gotta get back on track with stuff. And so last night I set my alarm for uh, 4.30. And I'm like, hey, my alarm's going to go off really early. I need you to hit me. And she's like, all right. Sure enough, alarm went off. I'm pretty sure she hit me before it went off. But I popped up and got a nice run in this morning. So I'm feeling good about that. That's so. love when you can turn to your spouse and say, hey, can you hit me tomorrow morning? Make she, sure I get up she, and go work she, out. Really have to twist her arm for that. Yeah. <laughs> But so tell me, so when you're, I know you, you've done so much in your fitness journey. I know that I, we could go into that literally the entire show, but in terms of working out, you like to run in the morning. That's typically what works best for you. I actually, I actually like both, but from a like overall life plan, the morning is better because when I run at night, I have a, it makes it even harder for me to get to sleep. And like, I already struggle to go to sleep. So but when I was like at the, height when i was feeling the best about like my, that journey my fitness stuff i was working out really early before anybody else gets up so then i don't feel bad about it because that's where i struggle is i feel bad about taking the time away from family and stuff like that and then what hopefully happens is i'm tired i'm more tired later tonight because i've been up earlier and stuff like that so that i it triggers me to get the kids to bed earlier i can get to bed earlier and then I get into that cycle that's what i prefer so I actually me. i actually really do like a night run like i love like a 10 p.m like sure. 11 p.m. run, but it's not the it's not where I want to be. So, so would you typically then run before daily drop in? Yeah, the daily drop in is not until seven o'clock Eastern. So that's yeah. Crazy. So I get up between four thirty and five and try and get a run and stuff. So if I like probably five to get it in as I got more like before, you know, as you start to as you run more and more, if you're running longer distances, then you have to get up a little earlier or whatever. I like because I need to make sure I have enough time to like cool off and cool down before we come live, so I'm not like a mess. Or well, I'm just curious. It sounds like to me and those of you in the comments that are watching live right now on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, we'd love to hear from you. I think, Jeff, we need to incorporate a segment every single day in Daily Drop-In to check in to see if you ran. Okay. It sounds That's... like something that needs to happen. We could do that right in the beginning, but right before we go into either, you know, our, our first segment, which depending on the day this week, we're actually switching some things up. So you're mm -hmm. either... It's either right before the good news segment or right before the brainstorm big So, so, so what would that would that be like? when you would go to me like I'm the on scene reporter and I'd report to you from wherever I am that that morning no, with our guest, or is it that would be like a weather thing? Ah, man, so close. Thing. It would be like a you would be required to comment. Okay. And we'd ask you, hey Jeff, did you get a run in today? And maybe you'd have to use a specific emoji in like showing us <laughs> that you did a run. Like you could use like, isn't there a running guy? There's emoji? a running, yeah. There's there's Are you a running like emoji. Bike? You put the bike emoji. The bike emoji, yeah. Yeah, I like. I wonder that. if there's like if there's a couch emoji, I could put that if I didn't do it, or oh, like a bed that. emoji or something like that. We need to never see that couch emoji. I'm just saying. We do have a lot of comments so far. Good morning to everybody jumping in. Sorry, we've been blabbing on. <laughs> Megan Wells, so good to see you. Namely is here. So good to see all of you. And looks like Katie's commenting. After school workouts is where it's at for her. She said her body needs time to wake up. So she doesn't like to work out in the morning. She's kind of like a midday, like right after school. When I know, I know Katie and then Kate, if you know, Caitlin Giordano, she's the same way. She's she got that time after work. That's like her workout time. And it works. You got to find what works for you. Like that's just. Yeah. And then I'm is. the opposite. I, I only work out at night, like before bed. Like that's, it's like right before the end of my day. Yeah. Does uh, that help you sleep? It's not so much about sleep. Like I can fall asleep anywhere at any <laughs> point in time ever. Like if you guys were like, hey, Ray, could you fall asleep on camera? I'd be like, absolutely. I can, without a doubt, I can fall asleep anywhere. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's more about like logistics. Like mm -hmm. I do a lot of work on camera for the team. I also sit in on a lot of meetings. So I feel like it's like I have to work out, then I have to shower and get all yeah, that. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it, this isn't hard to do. So like this doesn't take much. So it's pretty quick and easy. <laughs> to clarify, this isn't a lot to do either. Thank you very much. But, but yeah, it's like, I can't go into a meeting with wet hair. Can I? I don't know. Is that, a, is that? I mean, you could. Do? I'm pretty sure we've had meetings with wet hair and I didn't complain. Yeah, I guess so. I, I mean, guess for you, it's not, I don't have concerns about like, you know. 
but like in a professional setting, typically I mean, with the work that we do, it's easier to work out, then shower. And then while I go to sleep, like my hair can dry. Sure, and then yeah. in the morning I get up and I get ready for doing Plan, it. Plan a little fast and loose with the word professional, but like. I mean, I'm in a button down shirt right now, y'all. So I want credit. Like I am, I showed <laughs> up this morning. Like, um, you see, you see the effort that was put in here. All right. Can we get into this good news segment? We are off can, track. Can, be, before we get, I, I really want to get in there because I mentioned it. I always love the good news story, but can I give you a little bit of like ammunition against me because you'll enjoy this story can i give you a quick little story see this right here see a little bit so i'm glad you asked so i was raking some junk on the side of my house been cleaning stuff out i put the rank up against the the, a fence there and i'm just doing some other stuff and you know in the cartoons when they step on the rake literally stepped on that rake and luckily it was just from the like the fence over not like from the crown just boom about knock myself out like it was, and I'm like, whoa, okay. So I had to pop, like, and I was fine. I got done and whatever, came in, showered, all that stuff. I didn't even never looked at it. Like it wasn't really hurting much. I had a little bit of a headache, but I didn't like, and Amy's like, whoa, like yesterday it was like swollen up and like bleeding a little bit and stuff. I'm like, ah, but yeah. So I stepped on a rake, like literally like freaking cartoon character over here. Stepped on a rake, slammed myself in the head. Just, I thought, so you just, you take that, do what you want with it. Let's get into yeah. good news. You could pull that out somewhere else when I'm like, hey, Ray, da, da, da. And you're like, yeah, well, at least I don't step on rakes. Like, you know, like, and you can just yeah. hit me with I, it. Like, you have that permission now. I deserve it. I have serious concerns. Like, I feel like <laughs> you, you constantly need, like, a bodyguard with you at all times. I do. I do. Like, the, well, you know, and I thought that's why we hired Dave, but... Dave is not going to work. Yeah. You and Dave are full of shenanigans. I need someone that keeps you in line. Dave yes. is the opposite of what I need. Yes. All right. We're going to get into some good news, except in my opinion, and for all of you that are friends with me, that was good news enough. That was the good news story. For to set day. it up. So we'll be right back. All right, you guys know how our good news segment works. We like to bring you a good news story and daily celebrations every single morning for daily drop-in. In Teach Better Team Good News, Jeff Gargas stepped on a rake this weekend <laughs> and has a big lump on his head, right as a hairline on his, it looks like his left side maybe. So um, for those of you who are eager to follow Jeff Gargas on social media, he will be doing a, a wound update on his forehead. Mm -hmm. Good news story. <laughs> Jeff, today is also, in addition to celebrating the rake incident, uh, today, September 13th, Monday, is Positive Thinking Day, which I think Ooh. we all could use a little bit of a reminder on a Monday morning to share positive thinking this morning. So for celebration, for those of you in the comments, especially if you're here with us live, we'd love to hear something positive that you are either celebrating has already happened to you this morning, maybe your coffee tasted extra special, or you had a positive experience getting to wake up a, a child this morning, which we know is a rarity. But what about something that you're excited for? Maybe you're looking forward to a student interaction later today. We'd love to hear some positive stories or some predictions of something positive that will be in your day today. Jeff, do you have anything positive going on today? I saw something on your calendar that should make you very excited. I get to spend a few hours with you. Yeah. And Chad and Dave. So that's definitely yep. positive. Yeah. I mean, I got my run in. That's definitely a positive thing. Um, I also get to hang out. We get to hang out with Megan and Andrea later today, talk about our ambassador program. So that's always exciting. Is that tonight? I haven't looked at That, that is tonight. Before. If it isn't, I'm just, that's going to ruin my day. But yes, I believe it is tonight. Well, Andrea is listing that as her positive. Yeah. So obviously, so. if Andrea says it's that, then it is. So, Ooh, yeah, sorry, lots of my coffee unit. Lauren Ooh, is nice. Doing like a teach further unit with star. Oh, Wars. really? Um, so go follow, make sure you follow Lauren on social media. There's been a lot of pictures, lots of good stuff there. Um, That's super cool. Yeah. I How about it. you, Ray? What's, what's positive in your world today? You know, I won't, I won't lie guys. I have not looked far enough into what my day looks like. Now I'm just informed that it gets me with Andrea and <laughs> Megan, which makes me really excited. I got as far as seeing that I had a three hour blocked meeting with Jeff, Chad and Dave. And that was enough for me. I stopped right there in my calendar. So 
Jeff, it's it's meeting with you, Chad and Dave. That I'm so I excited it. to. I have no idea what we're meeting about. So whatever it is, is going to be super intense. I'm going to make some predictions. It either could be a leadership meeting, which blah, that would be boring. I'm hoping we're talking about the Teach Better Conference 2022, but I think that that's actually later this week. Um, I'd be happy to talk about the Academy. We could talk about some of the surprises that are launching this fall for the Teach Better team. Depending on what the meeting is, I'm pretty excited. But don't tell me because I don't don't ruin it. I want to keep a positive mindset. I, I won't ruin it. I don't know. So I won't ruin it. I th after this, I'm going to figure out what that meeting is. That's how we do things. It, how do you feel about this for everybody watching? And, you know, this is how the Teach Better team functions. But there's a three-hour blocked meeting. Two people involved don't know what the meeting's about. I hope Chad and Dave are, are ready. <laughs> Well, if, if Chad and I is texting back and forth last night, is any indication Chad doesn't know either. So Dave Schmidt, oh, Dr. Let's hope Schmidt Dave does. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> I will say some good news stories. Um, I couldn't determine, Jeff, we've been live together for Daily Drop-In every single week to kick off the week. Um, the, every, it's always a Monday unless, you know, we had a week last week where we had Labor Day off, so you joined us on Tuesday. And one time... We had a good news story and you kind of picked on me. You were like, that's not a good news story. You're like, it's interesting, but it's not good news. And every time now when I pick a good news story with you, I'm thinking through like, well, geez, is this good news or is this just interesting? And I, I think this is good news, but I also think it's really interesting and can do what our good news section is all about, which is sparking conversation and discussion with colleagues and students. So I just want to mentally prepare you that I don't know if you're going to find this as good news, but I think it is. Well, let's hear it. Let's let, and we'll let everyone else decide. All right. We won't let my opinion be the only, the, the, the end all. So for all of you that are joining us live to comment, if you could already start typing in, wow, Ray, that was good news, exclamation point, that'd be great. We'll all send it at the same time. So type that in if you're watching on your phone or computer, get that ready in the comments to send. Here is our article for the day. It says, for Gen Z, climate, cur climate careers are the clear path to success. It says, for many Gen Z students, completing their future, contemplating their future careers, the answer is clear, addressing the climate crisis. Multiple surveys has found an overwhelming number of students and professionals under 25 are pursuing environmental related degrees and careers. This shift in career aspiration among the world's youngest workers is a reflection of the heightened sense of climate awareness among the Gen Z and even Gen Alpha. A 2021 uh, research survey found that among Gen Z individuals, 76% of them cited climate change as one of the biggest concerns, and 32% have, uh, um, have participated in at least one major environmental action in the last year. The article continues and interviews a number of people. It references The Guardian and New York University, and it ends with this big call to action that I really liked. It says, climate change is a daunting challenge, but climate awareness and determination grows within each generation. This progress demonstrates that the youngest citizens are seeking a healthier planet in the future, which I thought was really interesting. Lots of good news there. Yes. Do you think so? Yeah, because I think, well, one, it kind of, kind of touched on one of them right at the end there is that clearly like the, this younger generation is thinking about this massive world problem that's a so easy to just like write off for the future to worry about, right? But <laughs> see, I'm try. Um, but also like that's good news. Uh, new jobs and economic growth is always good news, which is what that's showing too. And just the fact that the younger generation is thinking through their careers and seeing opportunities to get into something new and finding ways and excited to get out there. Like that's all sorts of good news, right? I thought it was fun. I'm with you on that one. I think this is one that you can do a number of things with. And we've talked about this in our good news segment numerous times. But as a morning reminder, we do these good news segments not only to bring you some positivity, some interesting articles, but also so you can use this to bring it with your students and discuss it during advisory. Use it as a bell ringer. Uh, talk about it in the staff lounge or as you're meeting in the middle of the hallway over coffee to foster some discussion, some easy fun facts that you can bring up to start those conversations, which is sometimes the hardest part of building relationships is trying to figure out 
how do you start the conversation? So we thought that this could be a good thing to bring it to. This was actually on a, a different news site than we usually visit. This was on the Optimist Daily, which I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So definitely go check out that news source as well. Jeff, we have a big topic that we are discussing all week long. And this theme is something that I know is really, really important to you and I, and something that I was very excited to finally see was here as a theme for the entire week of Daily Drop-In. Should we transition into that conversation? Yeah, let's do that. All right. We'll be right back for Brainstorm Bank. <laughs> All right, and welcome back. Uh, if you're just joining us, Daily Drop-In, we're here every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. If you're here with us live, obviously, you're already commenting, and we're loving every second of it. If you're listening on the podcast, Teach Better Talk podcast, give us a, a rating, review, and say, hi, come like, come find us on social media and say hi. That'd be great. So They could take a screenshot. They could take a screenshot and share it. would be awesome as well. We'd love to see that. Like I, I always love – sorry, now you got me off track with that. I love seeing all the different – like where everyone listens because i'm an apple podcast listener but like i found out that a lot of people i know that listen to podcasts they don't listen on apple podcast they try their other things the nice thing is this is on all of them so you can listen anywhere so uh brainstorm this brainstorm bank if you go to teachbetter.com slash brainstorm bank you can drop questions in there ask questions pitch ideas um whatever it might be that's there for you all the time so you can always drop it in that's going to help us answer questions might help us create new content think of themes for upcoming uh weeks and stuff like that as well so I will uh, say, Jeff, this topic was one that we have seen multiple times submitted yes. in the Brainstorm Bank. So for those of you that have been submitting, here's one that you're going to be excited about. Now, if you're watching live, you can just drop a question in the comments, obviously, and we'll get there too. So we're talking this week is all about equity and inclusion, which is like, it's this is a big one. You touched on it. It's, it's an important one. It's a very complex um topic problem challenge in all of world all of our lives and all of the world um especially into uh an education that was just been highlighted for the last 18 months even even more so than it than before because of the pandemic and how it just kind of brought a lot of issues to the surface around this so i'm excited to dive in this we got some i know you're going to touch on when we get into looking at the week and what's to come we've got some guests that i think are really going to bring a lot to this but you mentioned that this is something that is important to both you and I and everyone here on the team. And I think for me, it's so much because I'm trying to learn and be better. And I'm finding out all the time how much I don't know about things like this. So um, I'm excited about it. So can, can I throw the first question at you, if you don't mind, Ray? And it's kind of a big one. Sure. Why not? I but, guess. Yes. But from, from a classroom perspective, when, I, when, when someone says equity inclusion, like from a teacher perspective as Ray, Ray Hewitt, the sixth grade math teacher, where does your head first go when we say the words equity? And I know that's really big and I, and I, and I'm at, you can go ahead and be broad with it, but I think so many people are like, they hear that word, but they don't necessarily, if you've never really dove into it, what does that actually mean? What does that hit to you when you're thinking teacher? Okay. I gotta be thinking about equity. I gotta be thinking about inclusion. Holy cow. Where do I even start with this? Yeah, I won't lie, Jeff. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head at the very end of your question, which is asking like, I don't like the kind of that awareness, like, I don't know even where to begin. And I found that that was actually a lot of fear that existed um, in my circles and in educators that I was interacting with, where this became a really, really hot topic. It was all over the news mm -hmm. and it was something that was constantly being discussed. And a lot of educators that I was interacting with, whether they be working with students specifically or in leadership roles in the schools, had that same question of like, holy cow, thank goodness we're talking about this. This is a must topic that we have to approach. Where do we even begin? And for me as an educator, I think it really came down to, and I am not thrilled to admit this, but guys, we're going to be live talking about this all week and I'm trying to be transparent. I'm scared to talk about this because I'm scared to be wrong. And mm. I truly am open-minded. I believe in equality. I want to solve this problem. I don't think I can even articulate how strongly I feel in equality in, in these topics being discussed so we can find a solution that best serves all people. Um, but I feel so uneducated on this topic. And one of the things that I feel like Daily Drop and actually provides is a space to discuss. And so not only this week are we hoping to 
kind of create an environment where we can make mistakes and, you know, get feedback and um, ask those questions that we may not know the answers to. But if you remember, Jeff, we came live numerous times, especially over the summer when George Floyd was being a was being discussed at length. We were live multiple times just to foster conversation. We brought in a lot of educators that could share their voice and amplify their stories. And that was really insightful for me because I don't have any of these answers. I don't feel, but mm -hmm. I love that we have a platform to bring others in sharing their voice, which I think is incredibly powerful. I don't know if that answered your question, but no, I, I think you, this, I'm nervous I, for this. I, I think you answered it for so many people and so many of us who, when you talk about equity, inclusion, diversity, the, you know, the racial issues in our country, everything, just so many of us, I think, are, are right where you're at, scared I'm going to get it wrong because we realize how important it is. And I think because when a lot of times when it's popped up, we if, if you just hadn't dealt with it and recognized it before, you, you realize and you say, man, how did I not see this before? How did I not recognize how, you know, like how inequitable things were in my world because it didn't impact for me like it didn't impact me the same way right. and so for me a lot of it has been and has was and still is i'm better at this mental struggle of like you should have known like you should have been in this like and that's where that like this fear of like you are you am i gonna get it wrong because i just don't know and i think mm -hmm. um you know talking to you know some some of our good friends like I'm, I'm thinking of hedrick nichols right now if you don't know hedrick and small bites and everything well, that hedrick does we're well, well, in a few weeks I'm yeah ready. oh awesome that's great so one of the things that hedrick told me early on was like hey it's okay not to know like stop like you're not going to do any better for anyone beating yourself up about how you should have known or how you should know or how you're right wrong whatever she said just like what you said have an open mind go try and learn if you learn this much it's better than not, which is like her small bites is awesome because she takes small bites of the whole thing. So I think w regardless of what it is, whether, whether it's equity, inclusion, and, you know, inclusive practices and building that type of uh, environment, culture in your school, in your classroom, or looking into, you know, equality and, and racial tension, everything like that. The, the key is the open mind. The key is to be okay with the fact that you don't know. Even if you're doing well with it and feeling good about it, you still probably don't know a lot. It's having conversations. It's spaces like this, which is you already touched on why I'm so excited about this too, because this is a space where we can come, be vulnerable, be transparent, share the fact that we don't necessarily know or that we might get it wrong. And I think big piece is forgiving yourself for that with the intention of I'm trying to be better. Um, yeah. Not like let yourself off the hook because you don't have to, but a yeah. dwelling on the fact that you didn't isn't going to help you get better I, 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 in my mind. Well, and I think it's important this week, our goal as a Teach Better team hosting Daily Drop-In all week, we really want to bring on guests that can speak from multiple perspectives. And so one of the perspectives I know that, that you and I can speak to is this perspective of being a constant learner. And we're not just talking about representation of one area. We really want to discuss all minorities, all types of people to celebrate them and give you actual tactical strategies on what you can do in your classroom. I know there are some very, very common suggestions like having open dialogue has been something that's constantly been an ad been advocated for. I know reevaluating the texts and books that we have in our schools has, has kind of been a big movement, which I, which again, I'm so supportive of. Um, but additionally, when we're looking at, you know, a math teacher, a science teacher, um, a, you know, like, any educator in the classroom, if you're not somebody who can necessarily go and redo your bookshelf, what are all the other actual mm -hmm. steps that you can take in your classroom um, for all these pieces? And hopefully our guests can not only provide some insight, but also some suggestions on what we can do with that. I know, Jeff, one of the biggest things that I felt like I have been able to take away, one of the things that I love so much this summer was to get people just talking. I, I know it's really mm -hmm. tricky to say it because it sounds so simple, but with this topic specifically, I feel like the first step is just getting it discussed. Yeah. And I know that we actually had a really hard conversation. I think it was last fall. It may have been around this time last year where we were like, why did everybody stop talking about this? Like it was the only topic we were talking about for months yeah all of a sudden september hit and 
Now it became quiet again. And we want to kind of bring this topic back up and say, no, 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 no. We didn't solve it. What are the continued steps we're taking? Yeah. I, I like that you you touched on that because, you know, I was thinking like one of the, you know, from a classroom school perspective, one of the quote unquote easiest ways, simplest ways is to simply open up that dialogue too. Um, you, you were touching on the, the conversation around the, the issues, the challenges, but when you're speaking specifically to, you know, something like inclusion, the idea of just open up dialogue in your classroom so that students can hear different stories, this, different perspectives. And then that leads into also, I think one of the easiest things you can do, whether in a classroom or whatever your role in life is, is to listen to, reflect on, pay attention to the language you use, the, the, the words you choose to speak, the way you speak in your daily life to figure out, okay, am I being inclusive in the way I speak? It, it, are the things I'm saying potentially uh, pushing someone aside because they don't feel included, they feel pushed out. And I think that's a, such an easy practice. And I think we can learn those words. Or for me personally, is how I've learned what some of those words that I never thought of being as something that would be non-exclusive or potentially alienated was exactly what you said, just having this spa- this type of space to have conversation with people who have different experiences than I do and get an idea of, okay, I'd never realized that that, that word or that phrasing or, or writing that off or, or whatever was potentially harmful and made it so that good things I was trying to do weren't being received by everyone because of that, which is, as a teacher, is such an important piece. You know, this came up in our admin mastermind, which, by the way, if you're not uh, if you're an educational leader and you're not affiliated with the Teach Better Team admin mastermind that happens on Tuesdays, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, um, where administrators literally from around the world come together to talk shop. And they had a little bit of dialogue within the last few weeks. It was one that I sat in recently Mm -hmm. kind of around this topic. And I think the other elephant in the room that you and I would benefit from discussing before we get into the week is the discussion around that some schools, some buildings, some communities don't want this dialogue happening in their schools. Mm. And I I hate to bring that up again for what is it today? It's positive thinking day. I am (laughs) positive that this is the case. But I also really feel that while you may not um, in your community be able, have the luxury to bring up the magnitude of this topic, you as an educator have a responsibility to at least begin some of these elements that just has to do with making others feel welcome. We're not necessarily saying that you need to right now go purchase I'm sorry for the lack of a better example, a pride flag and hang it up at the front of your door. While that might be a wonderful step for many, many educators, we are talking about small steps that regardless of your community, we need to kind of bind our hands and and make Mm -hmm. some steps in this direction. So we're not necessarily telling you that you need to go and do big, big, big steps if that if you don't have the luxury or the ability to do that right now. But just because you aren't going to be able to take those massive steps does not mean you do not have a responsibility to take some of these small or minor steps. I and mean, I feel weird saying that, but it's an important reminder. Now that's right. It's, it's crazy how that ties in, in, at least into the mental mindset of actually what I posted on Instagram is worried about running and getting in like that it's okay to celebrate small wins and you should celebrate those. Do that right in, in a, in a then a topic, a, a issue, a challenge like this, when you talk about whether, you know, talking about equity, inclusion, diversity, equality, anything like that, these are big, big problems that are not going to get solved overnight or with a single action. They're not going to get solved with a, a, a pride flag. However, that might really help depending on your situation. Also, just, just using the, the someone's preferred pronouns could be a massive step for that individual student, even though it might not do a lot for the a lot, quote unquote, for the, the the massive movement, but it's focused on the little things you can do. And the you, it, that might just be having conversations at this point and learning. And you can take those small steps, but don't look, don't degrade, don't downplay those small steps because those little small steps, one could be huge for someone, but two add up to bigger steps. And I think that's, that's a, a big, big piece of this. And well, I think- a silly example, Jeff, which I don't know if it hits home the same way. We kind of talked about even the holidays that we celebrate on daily, yeah. topic, right? We wanted to bring some really goofy holidays to all of you, right? Late, like earlier this week, it was National Salami Day, right? How funny was that, that we were able to all celebrate that together. 
But on the flip side, we also have made an effort to actually shout out to Brad Hughes and uh, Rachel on the Teach Better team who have kind of worked together to look at all the religions and trying to bring in some mm, of those yes. celebrations. That small step, while not necessarily solving a huge problem in this massive issue, acknowledging what other people are celebrating, the other experiences that other people are going through is a step in that direction. And mm -hmm. to be honest, I felt silly, almost nervous to bring up that there was a Jewish holiday last week, but I don't know why. Isn't it good for us all to celebrate like as many holidays as possible? You may not religiously be celebrating that holiday, but isn't it cool to know somebody right now is celebrating something wonderful? There's happiness. There's wonderful yeah. joy in that. So. And that, in, in, in right, that's an awesome point because that's, that's one of those, it's a really like, it's it's actually a really small, like very simple thing to just recognize yeah. the holiday. And just recognizing it mm -hmm. can mean the world to somebody. Say so, like I just I just mentioned it earlier, you know, about like using someone's proper pronouns. Like that's a really simple thing to do, but could be massive to that individual or a group of people or anyone who might identify that way. It's the same thing when you think about like a holiday or stuff like that. I think you touched on it early on, like we get in our heads and we're so worried about getting it wrong, saying it wrong, talking about it wrong, helping to celebrate it wrong that we choose so often to not to just not do it because it's more comfortable to not do it. And we're not going to be wrong when we need to recognize like, yeah, that's a really small step. And even if you get it wrong, a lot of people are going to appreciate the effort. You well, might get people that, that talk or whatever, but like it, you can take these little small steps and then they won't feel as scary. And you do more and more and more and more. And that's how we get better. So I have a really dumb question that I'm legitimately asking, but because you just brought it up, I cannot be the only one. That's my mindset all week is like, if I have something that I'm not sure if I should ask, my mindset is there's probably somebody else <laughs> thinking it, so I should just ask. So for example, not wanting to get it wrong. I just flipped through here and tried to find an upcoming holiday on our list that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Now I have a little bit of a luxury because I'm Jewish and I, there's a lot of Jewish holidays going on right now. It's a big celebration for sure. that faith. So a lot of the hard ones, like I know within the next few weeks, but September 27th, there is an Islam holiday that I, I don't know how to pronounce. I can actually tell you the description. I have a beautiful description here. It happens every 40 days. But again, this is one that, that I might choose and I won't anymore because of this topic, but could have chosen to just not, just not acknowledge, right? Mm -hmm. It's on my list. But guys, I have like 50 things on my list of holidays we could choose to celebrate, I could skip that one and not embarrass myself not knowing how to pronounce it. But the reality is, is like I could also Google it or ask somebody that could give me that insight and choosing to acknowledge it, even if I pronounce it wrong, is still a wonderful moment for us to celebrate mm -hmm. that somebody who, you know, is in the in that faith wants to celebrate. I, I think it's important. Yeah, and I think I think Ray, the way way you because as you were like, I can choose not to in my head I was going, or you could Google it, and you literally said, or I can take a minute. Google it and do my best to recognize because someone that might listen to that or hear that says, hey, she at least took the time to try and understand something about my religion, something about my faith, something about my world, my culture, my 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 experiences, whatever it might be like that's that's important. And you're going to then know a little bit more about it. Right. And yeah, it'll be a little more, you know, what I mean, like less likely next time to be worried. Yeah. So, and there's yeah. a lot coming up. There's not only uh, Muslim holidays, there's, there's, I mean, geez, we have a, a international lesbian day coming up. I mean, these are all minorities that have been silenced that we want to celebrate. And I'm excited to take small steps or at least start conversations about discussing inclusion, equality, diversity and everything else because the Teach Better family is made up of all different types of people. And if mm -hmm. you are someone celebrating, if you are somebody that is doing something that we can recognize, that is the community that we only not only want to foster here on Daily Drop-In within the Teach Better team, but also something that we want to help you take even a teeny tiny step to create that welcoming environment with your family. So we really appreciate you being along with the ride this week because these weekly themes our, our hope is with them is that they spark um, change and, you know, reflection. So it's important. Yeah. So I'm excited Crazy. for this. I'm excited for this week. I'm nervous about this week, but I'm excited. But I think that it's so much easier for me to talk about like flexible seating. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's discuss flexible seating. I got you guys. Go get some stools off Amazon. Let's do a donor's choose. Like sign me up. <laughs>
I, I'm just excited for you. I know we're about to get into preview in the week. I'm excited because I'm I'm super pumped for tomorrow's guest. So oh, this week actually has guests that okay, so we do let's okay, spoiler alert. We do these themes in advance and we try to like get guests that are really gonna add to the week. But sometimes you get somebody who like, of course, can talk on the theme, but maybe isn't considered an expert in that area. The guest this week, Jeff, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like nervous that I won't be able to hold conversation because I'm so excited that they're coming on the show. I'm a little, I've, I've. That's where you just, you just ask the question and let them go. Let them I know. shine. You I know? just didn't drink coffee because I think I'm going to be like, uh, so excited. <laughs> oh, Echo is talking to me. Is that, Eliza, is that Alexa? Oh, yes, no, I just... except here it's not. It's the other one. You know oh, how you can is go it Google? Things? Oh, you do the other. What's the other name? What do you call it? Echo? Yeah, and you can call it computer. Oh, computer. There's three names for the Alexas. Yeah. You can call it computer? Yes, there's three. It's computer, Echo, which is this one, and oh, sorry, <laughs> Hey, Echo, stop talking. We're good. Jeff, can we please get into this upcoming week? I think we should. I think we should. I want to formally apologize for all of you that had us too loud on your volume and your, your music box talk to you. We apologize for that. That's what my That's dad fun. calls it. He calls it a music box. I'm just saying. <laughs> music box? Yeah. He's always like, go ask the music box. I'm like, music um, box. Okay. Anywho, for all of you, good morning. Uh, we're thrilled that you're here for Daily Drop-In. We are almost at the tail end of our Monday morning show, trying to wake you up, usually with some positivity, but who knows what we've been able to add this morning. It's Monday. You know that Jeff and I really are just kicking off the week. Hopefully, a lot of you are just like snoozing through our Monday where you're slowly waking up and not expecting too high of an expectation from us. So we appreciate that about you. Later this week will be great. So let's preview the week. So tomorrow, Jeff, we have Jed joining us. You've been friends with Jed for a while and I couldn't believe you were friends with him. I've been following him on social media forever and he's coming live with us. So he was actually, Jed actually went to school somewhere in school with my older brother, Paul. And so when I got into when this whole start thing started, Paul's like, "Oh, you should talk to my friend Jed because he's been like South Carolina Teacher of the Year and everything like that." And so yeah, he's been on the he was on the podcast and just yeah, I love I love following him on social media. Well, and Jed, his last name is Dairyberry, right? Dairyberry. Mm -hmm. And um, he was on the podcast. That was such a good episode. I know for those of you who might be listening to Daily Drop In on Teach Better Talk podcast, if you go back a few episodes, he was somebody that we were able to feature relatively recently within the last six mm -hmm. months he's an incredible educator so fun to follow on social media great personality i'm so thrilled that he's on this week i will need some teach better love keeping my composure because <laughs> i just think he's the coolest guy ever so just saying okay then we're getting into um on wednesday we're going to be joined by stephen weber and stephen weber i am so overjoyed to be talking to you because he has been blogging for the Teach Better team yeah. for a long time. He's an administration. He has a lot of different elements that he shares his voice on. I cannot believe that he's joining us live. Like I get to meet him. That's yeah. That's I don't think I've I don't know if I've ever talked talked with Stephen, but yeah, he's been writing for us forever at all. I mean, his posts are good. But he he's doesn't good. even just write for us. Like it's not just something where oh yeah, every so often he pops up. Like mm -hmm. if you go to teachbetter.com in our blog section. He is constant. He blogs multiple times a month about a lot of things. Yeah. I used to be in charge of um, helping with some of the images that were affiliated with our blog. Shout out to Sarah Jesse, who now takes over that role for the Teach Better team. And his name, his picture, his blogs came up constantly. I just remember constantly seeing his content. <laughs> so super, super cool. On Thursday, Daily Drop-In is going to be with Caitlin O'Connor, who is a Ooh. wonderful friend of ours over on Twitter. And she is a very, very, very strong advocate for having these types of discussions and wanting these discussions to continuously be something at the forefront of our minds. So I'm excited to hear her approach on Thursday. And then obviously, you know, guys, our Fridays, we always wrap it up 
with the one and only Brad Hughes. So it's so, so cool that he'll be joining us as well. That, that's, that is, that's a nice line. And Kate, Caitlin uh, writes for us over at teachbetter.com too, and often writes on these types of topics, topics and, and challenging topics. So excited. Well, this is a good week. I think her blog series that she does for us monthly has something to do with inclusion. I, I, I'm going to have to go check that, but it's something about bringing that topic um, to light. So I'm thrilled that we're able to have these types of discussions and obviously continue this theme all week long. Jeff, are you going to be tuning in every morning for Daily Drop-In this week? Uh, well, yeah, I have to now because you're, you're going to make me check in on my run-in. So That's good it's my it's, it's, I tip Now, I... Jokingly, I say that, but I do tip it. I'm almost always watch. Um, sometimes I'm distracted because I'm getting kids ready for school, but I, now I'm gonna have to be a little more in tune, I guess. No, Jeff, that's how we want you to watch Daily Drop In. Whether you guys can sit down and formally watch, maybe you're throwing us up on YouTube and watching us on your smart TV, which I know a lot that's of you do for those really awkward pictures that you send of our faces <laughs> really big. We love you for it, but also, like, this is the show is intended to like throw on your phone and be walking around your house while you're doing stuff. We know that you guys are getting kids up. You're making coffee. You're getting dressed for the day, brushing your teeth. We are thrilled that we are part of any element of your morning, kind of sharing some of that positivity, some fun facts, some moments of reflection. I actually know a lot of educators, Jeff, that throw us on in the car that are just listening as they're driving on their commute to work. Mm -hmm. So, so fun to have us be a part of that. I do see Karen jumping in. Who's very active on daily drop in. She is in the midst of moving, and this poor girl, you guys, teachers, shout out to our teachers out there. Think about moving as you just started your school year. <laughs> I'm stressed just thinking about it. Oh, oh, so good. Well, Jeff, thank you for joining Monday. Always good. Always. To go, to goof off and, and talk shop. I hope you have a really good day on your really fun, blocked out meeting that no <laughs> Um, that will be cool. And obviously we'll end our day getting to meet with Andrew and Megan. So that's never going to be a bad thing. Yeah. That's it's, that's a good way to wrap up your Monday. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. For everyone else, please don't forget. We'll be live every single morning at 7 a.m. Eastern streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch for the daily drop in, or you can catch us after the fact it's obviously saved on all those platforms. But one of our favorite ways for you to listen is to also head to teach better talk podcast. Make sure you subscribe, rate review, and check out all of the episodes that will be housed there as well. We are thrilled to be a part of your morning, and we are eager to continue being a part of your morning as your week continues. Thank you to those of you who popped in the comments. We will see you again tomorrow as we continue to dive into not only so many elements of Daily Drop-In, but our weekly theme this week of equity and inclusion. Jeff, I hope you enjoy your last sip of coffee there, bud. Have I a will. Morning, friends. Good morning. See ya. Thank you.